The first time my grandma saw Laura, she didn't believe it was a dog. I had just adopted her and I was sitting on the couch with her in my lap, laughing, while my grandma was standing at the doorway, looking at her with awe. She grew up in a small village in rural Greece, where dogs looked like this, and that animal I was holding in my lap that day just didn't seem like one of her kind. My grandma and Laura fell in love in no time. She was my first dog and she became a part of the family. She'd be with us every summer and winter and fall and Christmas and holidays and birthdays and special occasions. <laughs> Then came my other dogs, but none of them became grandma's dog. Not like Laura. Every time I'd visit my grandma, Laura would come with me. She'd get all excited just at the word grandma. I used to tell her, and she'd jump around and rush to the front door. And those five minutes from my apartment to my grandma's, seemed like forever. She couldn't wait to get there, then she'd run through the front door straight into the kitchen, grandma's modest little kingdom. She would sniff around while my grandma was cooking, then she'd sit beside her at lunch and look at her in the eyes. Those two shared something, and I would let them share it from a distance, just sitting around and watching. It's been 20 days now that my grandma passed. I still go to her house every day, like I used to for the past months, and I still take Laura with me. I get her all excited as I always did, and she always rushes through the front door straight to the kitchen looking for grandma. But it's an empty kitchen. It's an empty house. The house where I grew up in and where only memories live now. Memories of a family that is just not around anymore. I keep the house alive. I water the plants, I clean up, I make coffee and I spend a few hours working there like I used to. The silence is deafening. I can only hear Laura's paws on the floor going back and forth confused. There is no one cooking in the kitchen. There is no one sleeping in the bed. There are no familiar voices, apart from my own. But I stay silent most of the time. I wonder if Laura can still smell grandma. And if she can, how long will she be able to continue smelling her? I've tried to imitate the routine we had when she was still alive. I even cooked once, but it just doesn't work. Laura's presence comforts me in a peculiar kind of way. Her excitement every time she rushes up the stairs to get to the door makes me forget for a moment that there is no one waiting for us at home. I think she knows that something has changed, but her reactions tell me otherwise. And when sometimes I call out for my grandma, who's not there anymore. She turns around looking for her. Yeah, yeah. If she somehow appeared from the kitchen as if nothing had changed, Lara would not find that weird. And she'd go back to her routine without any doubt in her mind that this is how things are supposed to be. In a way, she keeps my grandma alive. She keeps the house and my memories alive. And just for a few seconds every day, memories are not memories, but actual moments where everything is again as Laura expects it to be. Έτσι τα ζεόμορφη.